Now, a desperate situation is unfolding on Chad's eastern border with Sudan. Thousands of people are fleeing violence in the West Darfur region and seeking shelter wherever they can find it. Aid agencies say medical facilities in the border town of Adria are overwhelmed by hundreds of injured civilians. Many children who've been left without their parents are starving to death. Zain Ravi has more from the Chad-Sudan border. At an old school outside Adre, the Chadian government is housing thousands of refugees who crossed from Sudan in just the last few days. No matter where you go, the sound of children crying follows. It is crowded, there is no hygiene, people are desperate. Squabbling for food, water, even the smallest patch of shade. But I scared and I'm working. My son was shot and we left him behind. Three of my children came, the others didn't make it. We left Janina without sheets, shoes or clothes, without food. We haven't eaten anything. My father was killed. They chased us and beat us. The children we left behind still haven't arrived. We couldn't bury the dead. We just had to leave them behind. Forced from their homes, walking for days, robbed of possessions and beaten. Some began cooking leaves to survive. They say they need help now. Every other person you speak to seems to be a witness to a murder. They've seen terrible things, experienced unimaginable hardships to come this far. And now the question is how to get them help? Where do they go next? What happens now? A visit by Chadian President Mohammad Idris Debi Itno brings with it a bounty of at least one meal a day. For most here, it is their first in days. We asked an army officer if it would continue after the president left. His answer, you tell me. There are no long-term solutions right now, only temporary remedies. Aid organizations admit they are underfunded and playing catch-up because international donors are ignoring the crisis as the number of refugees continues to grow. During a meeting with aid groups, the president warned, the war next door will not be over anytime soon. The number of refugees, he said, could hit one million. Zain Basravi, Al Jazeera, Adre, Eastern Chad. A new three-day ceasefire in Sudan, which started early on Sunday, appears to be holding. Aid agencies are hoping the pause in fighting will allow them to safely deliver much-needed humanitarian aid. Heber Morgan reports from the city of Omdurman, near the capital, Khartoum. People here in the capital, Khartoum, are divided about the latest ceasefire. Most are happy about the respite in fighting, giving them the chance to stock up on basic necessities such as food and water, especially in residential neighborhoods which have been cut off from running water since the start of the fighting between the Rapid Support Forces and the Sudanese army in mid-April. Others are taking the opportunity to leave the capital, saying that they're worried once the 72-hour ceasefire expires, there will be more intense fighting between the Rapid Support Forces and the Sudanese army. But some residents, especially in the north Northern part of the capital, Khartoum, who we spoke to, say that they're concerned about an uptick of robberies and home occupations by the paramilitary rapid support forces. And that's because during the last ceasefire, which lasted for 24 hours, there was a noticeable increase in the number of home invasions and occupation by the paramilitary rapid support forces, as reported by residents. Some of those who we spoke to say that this ceasefire is between rapid support forces and the Sudanese army, and that it involves only military movements. But when it comes to the uh, issues of home occupation, allowing civilians to access what they need or leave their homes or stay in their homes, then they have not been taken into account. There's been no fighting reported uh, on, on Sunday, the first day of the 72-hour ceasefire. But people say that they are worried that uh, because of the duration, and because it's for 72 hours, then the two sides may not refrain uh, from any military movement. The mediators, Saudi Arabia and the United States, made it very clear that there should be no use of heavy artillery between the RSF and the Sudanese army, no use of surveillance drones, uh, and no use of fighter jets. So fighting from any side is uh, not uh, allowed under this new ceasefire. And should the ceasefire be violated, then talks in the Saudi city of Jeddah, which is hoped to lead to a permanent ceasefire between the two sides to end the fighting here uh, in the capital Khartoum and around the country, will be adjourned. Hiba Morgan, Al Jazeera, Umdurman.